All right, so Albert Einstein said that the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And I've found that in many different times in my life in different careers, but Moringa has kind of really uh, proved that as a point. So I'm calling this Front Yard Pharmacy um, because, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second, but it originated from the Himalayas in India, and uh, the, it's a tree that, it's, it's technically a perennial vegetable tree. It's a, a year-round vegetable tree. It's, you can eat the leaves, and it's really very nutrient-dense, technically the most nutrient-dense food that they've found on the planet so far. And at some point, maybe someone will prove that wrong, but right now it's, it's loaded. Um, every single thing is edible from the seeds, which are here. So the seeds of the Moringa uh, have kind of wings on them. And they're kind of they're meant to fly. So when they come out of the pod, so the seeds are edible. If you eat one of these seeds, you actually can get uh, everything will taste sweet for the next 30 minutes. Wow. So if you don't sweeten your coffee, it's very stringent tasting. And some people actually it's very acquired. So some people really like the taste of the seeds now. But very stringent. You guys can try that. I'm gonna let you guys have some of these seeds if you want them. Um, these are the fresh mor moringa leaves, which um, I pulled off this morning. See how well they kept. Um, pretty good. So, I have a couple different trees, and, and it's funny because they all turn out a little bit different. But the leaves are edible, the seeds are edible, the pods are edible, um, the pods contain the seeds. If you press the seeds, it makes oil, and you can use it on your skin. You could uh, eat, cook with it. It's, of course, it's a very expensive product, so it's, it's hard to cook with it. Um, this is one of my trees, which just has massive leaves on it. And then this is the same tree and it has smaller leaves. So you, you basically just strip them off. Um, is it, it like, like it. for a salad? Salad, great. So you taste nice. amazing cooked. So I'm going to get into some health benefits, but if you guys want to like mm -hmm. uh, Pass those around. You can try some more in a second. Dessert. Um, <laughs> so quickly, I want to talk about the pharmaceutical industry. So. There's a market research firm, it's called Evaluate Pharma, and it estimates that the overall pharmaceutical market will be $1.12 trillion by 2022. A trillion dollar industry that is basically, and I know some medications are necessary, but it's an industry that actually continues with, what, how did they invent pharmaceuticals? They find a plant that heals things, they extract the elements out of that plant, then they synthesize those elements, and every time an element is synthesized, it has some kind of a side effect on our body. So, they give other drugs to medicate for those side effects. And um, the thing about Moringa is just like ashwagandha, if you guys know a little about herbs, it's an adaptogen. So Moringa will adapt to whatever is in your, whatever your body needs, uh, whatever kind of nutrients your body needs. It technically doesn't heal any diseases, it just floods our body with pure bioavailable nutrients and allows our bodies to heal themselves. So um, there's 23% protein in the leaf. So if, if people are like, oh, vegans, where do you get your protein? Well, it all comes from plants anyway, and that's, this has 23%. It's got more iron than spinach, more potassium than bananas. It's got 11 times more chlorophyll than wheatgrass. If you want to do a wheatgrass shot, you know, eat some Moringa. Fresh leaves are awesome. They're my favorite, but the powder you can, is very concentrated. Um, it's got more calcium than milk. 46 antioxidants in the leaves. This is, and I'll tell you in a second why that's awesome, but 46 antioxidants and 39 anti-inflammatories. And 18 amino acids, where eight of those amino acids are essential, that our bodies don't produce. So, just these stats alone are pretty incredible. It's got flavonoids in it, it's got more polyphenols than red wine. Um, it's the only plant to produce really high levels of zeatin, which is an antioxidant, but zeatin is also a neurotransmitter and a plant hormone. And it, it, um, it contributes to increased memory function, concentration, kind of like a, a concentration element. 
Um, it's got very strong anti-aging properties, the zeatin, and all of the nutrients combined help with anti-aging. Um, on PubMed.com, 10 years ago there was five studies, I think that's what Mariko said, our teacher, in the Mariko course, she said five studies 10 years ago, or 10 studies, something like that. There's tw over 1,200 medical and scientific studies on Moringa right now. People are studying it heavily for all different diseases. In India, there's a Ayurved the Ayurveda, Ayurveda, um, EDA, something like that. Ayurveda, something like that. But it's an Indian medical tradition, and it says, in that tradition, it says that Moringa cures 300 diseases, including gout, uh, diabetes, <laughs> cancer, hypertension, lupus, autoimmune. It cures osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. People, it goes direct, the nutrients flush right in, go directly to the bone and strengthen the bone. But as far as cancer, the antioxidants, I don't know if you guys know what the ORAC value is. The ORAC value of antioxidants is how they measure what's in them. Now it's kind of relative in a way, there's not necessarily something fully combined, but it's 153,000 on the ORAC uh, rating for Moringa, which I think blueberries are probably like 50,000. So it's like even three times what, what the highest other things, and pomegranates too. Acai? What's that? What's acai? Acai? Oh, I, I don't know, but I'll, I'll uh, I, I can look that up. Mm -hmm. So what can you do with Moringa? First off, obviously you can eat it. You can eat it fresh, which is my favorite. You can make some tea out of it, which is awesome. Skin care. There's also, uh, you can use animal food livestock. Animal, food, animal medicine. A horses have digestive problems. The vets are going to put them down. This guy started feeding his horse Moringa, just ripping it right off the stem. His digestive problems were cured in two weeks. Two weeks he was fine. And healthy, way healthier. Um, it's also the seeds are used as a flocculent. A flocculant is something that when you crush the seeds up for developing countries, you put them in some dirty water in a pond, some muddy water, and it will attract all of the sediments, all the particles to the seeds. So it cleans and purifies water, the seeds do, for countries that need that. Um, here's another really interesting thing. We have a big problem with you know this the climate change, global warming. And there's a lot of things out there saying carbon sequestration right now. And a lot of, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but carbon sequestration, there's kind of things that are going around like for loggers. Like you chop down all these trees, at least plant that many trees again. But they're going to take like 30 years to grow. So it's not necessarily a one for one. So we're, find, we're trying to find plants out there that will actually take more carbon in and take less time to grow and take more carbon. So according to a Japanese study, the rate of absorption of, or assimilation of carbon dioxide by the Moringa tree is 20 times higher than that of any general vegetation and 50 times higher when compared to a Japanese cedar tree. The Moringa tree will be equivalent to the effectiveness of 50 Japanese cedar trees in absorbing carbon dioxide. For example, if we expanded Moringa from 240,000 acres worldwide to 2.4 million acres worldwide, that would equate to five gigatons of CO2 being sequestered. So everyone should be growing Moringa, especially if we're in Phoenix, because we can. It grows really well in drought tolerant conditions. It does love water, and it changes the flavor if you water it more versus not. It's something called the horseradish tree. When you taste these, it doesn't quite taste like wasabi or horseradish, but some of them do. But I water mine a lot. Yeah, it's just water them less. How big do they get? Uh, they can get up to 40 feet. Wow. But you can chop them down all the way down to the base, and they'll grow back next year. I have a different method of growing, but uh, so, so it make, does it make a nice shade tree too? It can, yeah, it can absolutely shade. You don't eat it up first. <laughs> well, that's the problem I'm having is like I have two nice trees, but we go they're kind of scrabbly looking because we've been harvesting them every single day, yeah. eating them. So now I just, I mean, I have hundreds in my growing them right now, but I we need more. We need fresh leaves at the farmers markets, things like that. But it's a tree that really can change the world in a lot of different ways. But even though there's a whole bunch of information that's in my brain about this tree now, it's the tip of the iceberg. It's like I can't learn everything. I will never ever be able to know everything about the Moringa tree. But I'm down to try. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, it's an amazing tree. Quick question. Uh, how big, you, uh, how long have you been growing it? You said they grow so quickly. So how long have you been growing it and how tall is yours? So I, st I put my first one in the ground last summer, in the middle of last summer, the wrong time to plant a tree anyway. 
I didn't mulch at the time, and I didn't have my watering system in. So it stayed pretty scrawny, like a scrawny little trunk. It was about this big until February, when I got my first load of wood chips, put it around the tree, put my watering system in, started getting constant water and wood chips, and now that trunk is like this big since February. Um, it got about 15 feet, but then the, one of the storms knocked it all the way down, took it out of the ground I, during the storm. I was trying to pull it up, but it was like a sail. So I just chopped all the branches off the top, left the trunk, pulled it back up and staked it. And it grew like in a couple weeks, during the middle of the summer, the middle of the heat, like, like six feet on every, on like 20 branches. Yeah. So then I just did a video where I cut it down again, planted these huge cuttings, and I changed the size of my tree. So it, the branches are way up here, and it's hard to harvest. So I cut it down to here, and there's a big trunk now, and now it's been 21 days ago, 22 days ago, and it's got these nice little two feet sections of, of like froes of leaves on it. So you can do whatever you want. You can trim it however you want, but um, you can make it a bush or a big tree. Mm -hmm. well, so it's a it's a tap root. So it'll it'll kind of circle around itself. It'll kind of go out, but it'll go down. And then after a couple of years, you actually probably don't even have to water it. Like Jake Mason's tree doesn't even water it anymore. Of course, he wood chips heavily, stays very moist under his yard. So some of these practices are just good to do, like wood chipping. It's just necessary out here. But where, where do I get the mortgage? Well, I have seeds, so you guys, and they 90, 80 to 90 percent germination rate in nice potting soil. 50 percent germination rate in native clay with no amendments. So they grow slower, but they grow stronger. Do, they, do these trees bring water? You said to have a tapper, will they actually bring water up from beneath and then maybe distribute it out? They Close live the in the roots. So the only thing they don't like is freezes and root rot. So if you get fro frozen and you freeze the root, it's going to die. If it, if it doesn't drain well and root rots, it'll die. But if it rots, you cut the tree off and plant the cutting in the ground somewhere else with better soil, and then it'll grow again. So every cutting will grow, every seed will grow. So it won't survive a 20 degree day then? Well, there is a variety that's technically supposed to survive down to 22 degrees. Now, if it's 20, you need to you need to cut it down and tarp it. So, so if you need any more details, talk to me later. Did you order your seeds from India? Um, there's. I'll tell you about that. Who, who wants to go next?